Uh, so welcome to the second session. Uh, can you check? Can the people in the Zoom hear me? No, no. Well, if they can hear me. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so for this second session, uh, we have uh, a set of uh, talks uh, that present some components of the software stack. Uh, so we have first EDDL for ML, uh, project pillars that will be presented by Jose Frisch from University Politecnica Valencia. Uh, then we have Ophidia for HPDA in project pillars that will be presented by Donatello. Okay. And uh, then we have uh, the Teclay split uh, that will be presented by Alex uh, Marcelo. So, without. Uh... Okay. okay, thank you very much. So, good morning. My name is Jose Flitch from Technical University of Valencia. And I'm going to present to you the uh, EDDL. So, I have 15 minutes. I hope that I will take only 15 minutes. Uh, not less also. So what is EDDL? EDDL is, a, is called, uh, is termed European Distributed Deep Learning Library. I think they are very important words for the European Commission. The first one is, so it's an European effort. So in order to have a deep learning library, so the end, this is the, the net result of, of this library. We have a deep learning library that is has been written from scratch uh, from uh, European partners. And then this is a European thing that is trying to, to have some competence uh, competition uh, against the other standard tools that we already know, right? And the other key word that is very important is the distributed nature. So we, we were aiming for a distributed training processes and targeting HPC systems. So basically, let's say diagnostic systems or uh, power nine systems where you have uh, GPUs are interconnected or also FPGAs because we were putting the project uh, having FPGAs, not only one FPGA, but several FPGAs in order to do inference processes very energy efficient. Okay, all of this with this uh, library. So it's open source effort. So it's available on GitHub and also on, on the eFlows for HPC project uh, GitHub repository. And basically the key, the key things of the libraries that is basically written in C++. This is a first complaint because the community usually likes or prefers Python. This is not my case, but I will accept it, okay? But uh, because we detected this, there is also a Python wrapper that I think is fully functional. And then you can do whatever you can do with the C++ version because at the end it's, it's calling these this functions. <laughs> the, uh, by EDDL, this is Python wrapper is also available on GitHub, so you can get access, but should not ask me because I can answer it only in C++, okay? But anyway, uh, yeah, there is the direct translation of functions at the end. Uh, the nice things of the library is that it's multi-device, so you can run it on CPU, GPU, and FPGA, and then should be with no, with no effort from the end user. So at the end, you just define the model, and then you train the model, and then if you want to run inference on FPGA, basically you do the same as you were doing it in, on, on CPU or on FPGA or on GPU. Actually. It defines also tensor operation support because at the end, uh, with the, for neural networks, you need to have uh, tensors for representing input data, output data, weights, and, and all this stuff. Okay. And uh, the distributed training support that I will uh, comment later. So, this is, has been performed in the framework of the DHEL project that will finish tomorrow. Tomorrow we have the final review, so we are a bit nervous, okay, but I think we will succeed, okay, with no problems. But the, the library is being used in, uh, in, in flows and also in other projects. So uh, basically, let me just summarize uh, the main components. The tensors are n-dimensional memory structures. Uh, they are not distributed uh, among the nodes, it's just on a single node used in the neural network model and tensors have an associated buffer and then the buffer will, will be on CPU, on GPU or an FPGA depending on where you run it at, at the end, uh, your, your model. The tensor have a shape and an assigned a specific device and then you have most of the typical operations on tensors. You can resize the tensor, you can change the dimensionality of the tensors and you can do all these kind of things that you usually need, right? And then we have also what is called the layers. The layers basically build a, a neural network model. So typical layers uh, has been implemented because we are targeting deep health, all the 
of 14 use cases for health systems. Uh, so from, from Alzheimer for uh, skin cancer and the, the kind of things. But I have to confess that most of these use cases rely on images and then they rely uh, on 2D convolutions, okay? But we have also activation functions and all these kind of things. I have to say that if you want to implement a new layer, probably in five minutes you can get it, right? Because you have a template and then you can add it quite easily. So one of the nice things of EVDL is that uh, you define a competing service. By competing service, you are isolating the, the infrastructure and then you're saying, okay, I want to use a CPU or I want to use a GPU or I want to use an FPGA or I want to use uh, 14 uh, GPUs or 20 uh, CPUs. Okay, this is the only thing you need to specify, and then all the code is remains the same. Okay, there is another uh, competing service that can be very very interesting for eFlows is that it is an extension to Coms. So a competing service is a Coms definition where you can uh, interact with Coms, and then you can have a distributed training in a node it will be EVDL spawning the processes, but internode will be will be Coms. Okay, it will be shown tomorrow in the review meeting also. And then we have also neural network specific things like loses, metrics, regularizing, analyzers, optimizers from, from for uh, neural network experts. So this is very, very common. And then there is a full API with examples, with demonstration, and with helps, uh, video tutorials also in order to install and to use uh, uh, the, the API because at the end, uh, the end user is using the, the API. Here you have an example. Don't ask me to increase font size because I can't. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, but here I can I can read this for you if there is any need. So basically, here on the on the left, you have a typical full deployment of a use case that could be the MNIST. That by the way is very tiny data set, right? And then you just need a very very tiny neural network. So this is the neural network where you have defined the network and basically you define the input uh, some liquid relus and dense layers okay so you create a graph at the end you build the model okay here so here you create the graph and then you build the model and then you specify the optimizers the loses the metrics and also the competing service for instance here you say specifying that you want to run it on the cpu okay Okay, sorry. I, I don't see it here. I don't know where to point also. Uh, I think Jorge was trying to use the mouse. Yes, here you you build you build the graph yeah. and here you uh, and here you, here you you construct the graph and here you you build the model. Sorry for that. Here you build the model. And at the end here you have some tensors definitions, okay, because you have the object of tensors. Here you load the tensors from uh, from a data set from the from from the directory. Now oh, disappear the mouse. Sorry for that. They cannot. They cannot. Yeah, they cannot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Then we have uh, some pre-processing of tensor because you want to normalize those, those values, for instance. And then here you have the the fit the fit uh, function main function that performs all the training with this uh, competing service. Okay. And then you have the evaluation using the test uh, data set and then you do this right. So it's, I think it's typical as you could do with, uh, with TensorFlow, okay? But at the end, the keyword is here is a European solution that right? should be promoted. Right. Here you can have the uh, two, two levels of, 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 yeah, of abstraction. You can have a course training on the top. You just say uh, fit with the number of epochs, or you can have all the functionality in order to build your own a training system or dynamic training system where you can iterate on the number of epochs, on the number of batches that you want to run. And then you have a lot uh, of uh, uh, functions in order to, to modify the batches, to get the next batch, or to initialize the statistics or change the, the target and all these kind of things that you can, you can build, right? So you can, you can customize your training uh, process. Here is one example where you, you can uh, define different competing services. So here on the top, you have uh, using four threads on your target uh, CPU, for instance, or here you have uh, one GPU here with the one you specify you want to use one. You have uh, four GPUs attached to the node. You can specify which ones you want to use it. And then you have a distributed training internally. Okay, there is no comps inter 
intervention here comes this uh, internode, okay? Or here, in, in, I like this, this one most because I work on FPGAs here, and you just specify, I want to use an FPG, okay? And there is nothing else you need to change, right? It will run. And here you have, uh, if you want to use it, comes, and then you have a configuration file, okay? The, the nice thing uh, of the project is the distributed nature. So we want to use HPC system for training, right? So we can use comps, but also there is an alternative one that uh, I think uses uh, very efficiently the, the infrastructure of the interconnect, right? Because at the end, when you have a neural network, you want to train in a distributed way. You want to, to have a kind of synchronization between the different nodes, because at the end, you are going to perform data parallelism. So you split the data set and then you have every node uh, training. They are diverging in the model and then you need to resynchronize, right? So here we implemented an MPI version that could be complemented with comps in the sense that uh, you can do a fully synchronous uh, uh, training. It means that on every batch you synchronize and every batch you synchronize. This means at the end, this is mathematically equivalent as a sequential training process, okay? because at the end, what we are doing is we have local batches on every node that represent a global batch, okay? If you take one node and then train with this batch size, and then you get the same, you see it's fully synchronous. But we know that we can relax this condition and then perform uh, dynamic uh, uh, synchronization in the sense that we can be very relaxed. So we can synchronize every given number of batches and this means that at the end you are giving more credentials to the CPU or the GPU to work rather than to the network. So you are changing the, the percentage of usage of CPU, GPUs, and, and network. Indeed, there is a, a bounded uh, strategy was that we can use in order to indicate the percentage of communication overhead you want. So you can say, I want just 20% of overhead of communication. And this will mean that we've calculated the number of batches that every time you synchronize. Okay. This, is this good or is this bad? Depends. If you're at the end of the process, you have a good accuracy of your model, then it's perfect. If you relax the training process, then probably you don't get this target uh, accuracy, but maybe you need two, two extra epochs, but the epochs are much faster because you are synchronizing not every, every time. Okay. So all this is in place on EDDL. And at the end, in order to perform this, let me show you in order to perform this, the end user only needs to add these three lines. So in it distributed, you are just specifying you want to use MPI in your, in your process. This is the previous process. And also you get the ID because every node will get its own ID. This will be used internally. And then you can set the strategy uh, how, how often you are going to synchronize, okay? There are different strategies. And at the end, you end up uh, the distributed nature, right? This is, this is the only need, the only thing that is needed for the end user to have a distributed training process with MPA or using NCCL. Here you can put it NCCL and then you have support, then it will be much, much faster. So we got very, very good results with the Power9 system with 64 GPUs. We got speed ups of almost uh, 55 or reaching 60, right? We know significant impact on, on accuracy. And then uh, this is what, well, this is the distributed nature. So every GPU is synchronized, is uh, doing the training, they are diverging, and then you have the all reduction in order to come up with the same model again. This is the same with NCCL. In NCCL, the, the good thing is that communications of NCCL is for this for intranode and internode. So it is optimized if you have uh, uh, NVIDIA links, okay? So it's much better than MPI also. And also it's much better than the distributed implementation inside EDDL within GPUs. Finally, uh, EDDL is compatible. It tries to be compatible with other models. So you bring your model. I want to use EDDL, okay? Convert it to ONNX, okay? And let's cross our fingers that this model it can be read because there are many flavors of models, many, yeah, yeah, many, many aspects. Uh, we, we, 
we found that there were missing layers or unsupported layers, and then we, we need to recall. But if you have a standard model, let's say, then there is no issue at all. Indeed, in the close project, we uh, there was a one partner that generated the model, imported to export it to NNX, and then we read it, and then we run it on FPGA. No problem. Okay. So you have the import and export uh, functions for NNX. And in the framework of the of the project, I have to say that EBDL is being used. I would say that somehow actively depends on the partners, not on, on us. But uh, we detected okay, in pillar one, we got a meeting because they managed to, to have a, a Python function uh, implementing a reducer of the models. So they get some questions for us and also for for Jorge uh, to use with comps. I think they managed uh, finally to, to have it. They were satisfied. And in pillar two with a, a system uh, model with a cycle tracking, uh, there is an effort to, to use uh, EDDL. So they tend to add the TensorFlow or Keras uh, scripts and then we are using them. And then tsunami and earthquake workflow, there is a good collaboration that is, uh, there is a, an effort to, to use EDDL and I think it was a success history also. So this is the conclusion to basically repeating myself. So basically you have EDDL. I think the European Commission wants you to use EDDL if, if possible. There is a Python wrapper and uh, there is a good connection with PyComs. And we have uh, initial implementations in the, in the project uh, for, for this. And the plan also is to use EDDL for FPGAs uh, when we can demonstrate that we can have more energy efficiency in some of the use cases. Okay. This is thank you. So I don't know if there are questions.